in this video we are talking about freestyles. Freestyles are so much fun to ride. They are so beautiful. And I really think that freestyles bring out this kind of magical connection that we have with our horses. So I'm gonna give you some tips if you are thinking about doing a freestyle with your horse, I'm gonna give you some tips to help you. And then I'm gonna do a voiceover of my Grand Prix freestyle with Natasha, which is just beautiful and so much fun to ride. So a couple of things if you are thinking about doing a freestyle, First and foremost is check the rules. So I'll put like all of the rules and resources down below here. It's important to know that you have qualifying scores at the level before you can do a freestyle. The reason for this rule is because in order to do a freestyle well, you have to be very proficient at the level. Riding to music and staying on time with the music adds an element of difficulty. So you just want to be sure that you're really comfortable with whichever level freestyle you're doing. You can do a freestyle from training level all the way up to Grand Prix. At the FEI levels, the only levels you can't do freestyles for are Pre-St. George and I2. So you could do a I1 freestyle and a Grand Prix freestyle, but no Pre-St. George freestyle. I don't know why that is. Let me know in the comments if you do. But, so be proficient at the level. Then the second thing is when you're designing your choreography, make sure to include all the compulsory movements at that level. So like I said, check out the description. I'll link below, but at each level, you have to do certain required movements and make sure to put that into your choreography. Usually what I do is I look at all the movements that are required and then I write a floor plan that I like for my horse. I try to think about starting with what are the best movements, highlighting what they can do well. You wanna to try to make the choreography a little bit challenging and difficult for your horse but make sure that it's doable. Don't do something so hard that it just becomes like totally messy and a disaster. So then once I've done the choreography, I ride through it a few times, I double, triple check and make sure that I have all the movements that I need included in the choreography, and then I do the music. I've put together my own musical freestyle for third level just using iMovie and like picking three songs that I like and then kind of blending them together. But I would recommend if you're doing an upper level freestyle that you hire a professional. So for Natasha's music, we hired a professional and he actually composed the piano music to her, which is just amazing. You want to make sure that the music that you pick really follows the rhythm of your horse. So you know, figure out how many beats per minute your horse's trot is, the walk and the canter, and then make sure that your music follows exactly your horse's tempo because that really is how you make the musical freestyle beautiful. Freestyles can be really fun. They're definitely challenging. I remember the first time that I wrote a freestyle, I was so nervous that I was gonna be on the music and that I was gonna finish at the correct time. So like anything, the more you do it, the better, the more you practice, the better you get at it. With Natasha's Grand Prix Freestyle, the first few times I was so worried about staying on the music, but now I've written it probably like 10 times and you get to where you know the music really well. And so then you can even make like little adjustments within the freestyle pattern itself, which is super fun. I listen to the music over and over and over again, um, like when I'm warming up, when I'm tacking up, that really is the best way, is once you have your choreography and you have your music, listen to your music over and over again, and if you have a video of you doing the pattern that you can play with your music over, that's the best. So let's pull up Natasha's freestyle and see what we have to say. This is Natasha's freestyle. I always start the music over near the letter P. After the judge rings the bell, what you'll do is you'll go to the place where you start and raise your hand. You always want to put in, I would say, like 10 to 20 seconds of music before your first halt. And you want to time it backwards so that you know exactly where to halt. 
Um, and then like I said, how do I know where the halt is? I've listened to this music like thousands and thousands of times. And so there's like a little change in the music, a little transition um, before I go into that halt. And what I really love about this music with Natasha is it goes so well with her beat. You know, you can just hear how she is right on track with the music and that is just really what makes it beautiful. Okay, so here I have a transition to the canner and you could probably hear the, like the viola come up and that's how I knew that it was time to change into the canter. And some freestyle music is different than others. Like some people have very distinctly different canter music. Um, like I said, I had a guy compose this music for Natasha, so it's um, a bit more fluent throughout all three gates. So Natasha is really, really good at the tempi changes. So I do the two tempis on a half circle into the one tempis twice during this freestyle, which is a very high level of difficulty. But one thing that is really cool about freestyles is you can design them so that they highlight your horse's best qualities. So you notice how I started out with a passage, pee off, and then I went kind of right into the canter work because that really is Natasha's best qualities. And there I do an extended canter into a double pirouette. And um, Natasha is a horse who, she's super handy, right? She's a little bit smaller, but she's super handy. She's really good with her changes. And so that's why I designed the choreography in this way is to highlight what she does well. So now I do my half pass and then I do my two tempies on the circle into the one tempies again. And when you're designing your choreography, two things is you want to do it symmetrical. So I pretty much do the same thing to the left and then I do the same pattern in the other direction. Um, that's really important when you're, when you're designing it is that you, the judge wants to see you do the same things in both directions. And um, you also want to kind of go for a challenge, like challenge your horse and see how much you can do, but don't overdo it, right? Because like, if I have a mistake on one of those lines of tempies, it's gonna be very costly to my score. Um, and then like for her, her extended canter, you can hear the music build for the extended canter. And then here it gets a lot quieter for the pirouette. So I'll also put in a video of just the music so that you can just kind of focus on the music as well. But it's pretty fun to ride the freestyle on Natasha because she loves her music. It's like when she hears her music go, she kind of puffs up and she gets really excited. So riding to music can be a really fun way to encourage your horse. Um, so here I'm doing the walk. And again, there's a certain, I think you have to do 20 meters of collected walk and 20 meters of extended walk. So make sure that you do enough walk. And you notice how the walk music is much softer and it doesn't have as strong of a beat because really what you wanna do with the freestyle is you wanna bring out emotion and you kinda of wanna tell a story with it. And then here's my trot transition. So if you listen carefully, the freestyle designer, he put in transitions. So I could kind of hear the music swelling before the transition. And like I said, I've um, ridden this freestyle so many times that I know the music pretty well. It's tricky if you get ahead of or behind your music because then you have to kind of hurry up to catch up. So, um, the first few times I rode it, I got way ahead in the canter because I was just like rushing through it too much. And so then I had to like really collect her and wait and make time. So that's why you have to have extra control. Like you have to be very proficient at the level before you do a freestyle is because you have this added component of trying to stay on the beat. And then here we do our extended trot and then back to the passage. So basically I start and finish the freestyle with Natasha's passage because 
her passage is one of her best movements and I just want to really highlight that for the judge and you know figuring out exactly how the judge scores everything is like a whole nother discussion um, which I'm not an expert on but you get scores for each movement so I get like scores for the piaf, the passage, the one tempis and then you all get also get an overall artistic score and degree of difficulty so I hope that this video encourages you to do a freestyle and let me know in the comments if you have any other questions so thanks so much for watching be sure that you're a subscriber to my channel uh, I make new videos every single week and when you subscribe you'll get notified when my new videos come out